Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I'm back with my GoPro on another dispatch video. We are at the Pepcom Holiday Experience and there is a lot of Christmas stuff up here. And that's because this is kind of the preview show for the holiday season for a lot of tech brands. There are about 48 different companies here. So we're gonna walk around and see what these companies are offering. And maybe we'll get some stuff in for review. Let's have a look. Now this is the Now Watch. And if you can look closely here, you'll see that it's not looking like a watch. It doesn't have any screen or hands or anything else. And if I have my friend here uh, take out that magic device there to pull it off, um, basically you can just interchange these uh, little stones that go on the top of it to change the look. But what it's doing in the background is actually keeping track of all of the things that a health tracking device would keep track of. Your stress, your heart rate, and sleep, and that sort of thing. And what it's doing is reporting that back to a phone app, but you don't have to see it all the time so you don't get stressed out. And what you can do also, there's a little crown button there, and if you hit the button, when you feel a certain way, it'll log that in the app and you can see what your physiological state was at the time. They call this an aware-able, not a wearable, because it is a very different watch that's collecting data, but only showing you what you need when you want to look at it on the phone. So I am over here at the Philips table and they've got this enormous Bluetooth speaker here called the Party Speaker X7207. It weighs a lot because it's got a battery that can go for 12 hours and apparently you can sync about 50 of these things together to stack them up and get a lot more sound out of it, although they cost about $289 a piece. Now a couple of years ago we looked at the August lock that allows you to use your existing deadbolt but make it smart. This is the new version of it and what's nice about this new one is that it has Wi-Fi integrated so you don't need to use a separate module to get it on your home system. It works with HomeKit, Google, uh, Amazon, SmartThings, everything just kind of works here and you can also keep your existing lock on the outside of your door. All right, now this is a product called the UV Seed and what it is is a, it looks like a phone battery but in fact this is a UV sanitizing light and it's got some smarts attached to it. So what I'm gonna have my friend do here is maybe sanitize the uh, bottom of that uh, iPad tray there, if you don't mind. And what she's gonna do right now is put the, uh, the device over that. And you can see now on the phone, it's kind of guiding her into uh, the process here of sanitization. And there's also a timer up at the top to make sure that you get the right amount of exposure to the surface area. And then when it's done, it'll tell you what has likely been destroyed by the light over that period of time. And this is similar to a lot of medical devices that um, you'll use in a medical setting, you know, to, to kind of sanitize surgical tools and that sort of thing. Now, what will also happen, though, is that if somebody's hand gets under it or a dog walks in front, it'll stop because it can recognize... Uh, Oh, they got to reset it real quick here, but it does, uh, they say, recognize a human or living tissue underneath it because you don't want to expose yourself to this kind of UV light. So there are some safety uh, guards in there. But if you are a germaphobe and want to get your stuff uh, totally cleaned on the go, this thing will do it for you. Now, Roku is here, and you may have heard the news that they've partnered up with Wise to manufacture some smart devices for the home. Now, these look exactly like the Wise products do, but as you can see, they're labeled Roku and these are all separate so you can't use a wise device with this new roku smart home unless it's this one with the branding on it nor can you use a roku device with your wise apps and ecosystem so these sit separate even though these are manufactured by wise but i think for people that are very invested in Roku, this might be something they uh, may gravitate towards if Rokus are all over their house. We'll try to get in one of these to review and see how it differs from Wise and also how it integrates with the Roku TV players. Now this company is called Cyber Acoustics. They've been making PC accessories since the 90s. They're kind of a survivor here. And what I like about these is that they're not flashy, they just work and they're not all that expensive. So they have docking stations here for your USB-C equipped computer. They've got Bluetooth and USB headsets, speaker phones. They have a Zoom certified 1080p camera here. I believe this one's only like 60 bucks. So they don't go too flashy here on the packaging and everything, but the products are pretty consistent. And if you're kind of uncertain sometimes when you go out and buy one of these accessory items where it comes from, this is a company that's located here in the US and you'll get a little bit more support behind these kinds of items. So I stopped over at the Seagate table and they've got a bunch of these Star Wars and Marvel themed hard drives. These are mechanical drives, two terabytes, 
about $110 a piece, and they have some RGB lighting on board. So if you got a kid and 110 bucks to kill on a stocking stuffer, this might be something worth considering. Now here's a product we've seen in the past at one of these shows, but it's been improved quite a bit. This is the Lockley Vision Elite. And this is a door lock, a security camera, a doorbell, all in one. And it has features that a lot of those separate products have in this single unit. So if somebody walks by your door, it'll pick them up and record it and push you a notification. There's no cloud involved. It connects up with this hub here that sits inside your home. So there's no monthly fee to use it. You have to charge it, of course, but it's got a solar panel under that sticker now. So if you have a spot that's in good sunlight, you might not ever have to charge this thing because it's not usually consuming that much power when it's sitting idle. Uh, so to get in your house, you can use a key, which is underneath that solar panel. You can use the keypad that we saw when we started the clip here. You can also use a fingerprint to get in as well. And then, of course, there are virtual keys you can use on a smartphone. And you can even text people keys to get in. It works with Amazon and Google at the moment. But it's kind of an all-in-one here if you were looking for something that combined a lot of different types of these security products in one piece. So we stopped by the Lenovo table here, and I found something you all might find of interest. This is the new gaming Chromebook, the IdeaPad 5i. It's got a 16-inch display that runs at 120 hertz. It has an Intel i5-1235U processor on board, but no GPU. And why, then, is it called gaming? Well, they're targeting this at game streaming. So this is going to come with trials of GeForce Now, Amazon Luna, and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And a lot of those services now are running at faster than 60 hertz frame rates. And the 120 hertz 16 inch display here will be able to work at those faster frame rates using the browser, I believe, which is pretty cool. Some other features of this is that it's got an RGB keyboard and it comes in at about $5.99, so not all that expensive. And if you're doing a lot of game streaming, uh, this might be something worth looking at. Now, additionally, there's also in-home gaming apps that also have web clients that might work on this too, along with Android clients. So there are some uh, pretty cool gaming opportunities with this if you are into game streaming. And of course, with the i5 on board, it'll probably do pretty well with emulation on the Linux side too. So we are at the Poly table, and this company is Plantronics and Polycom. Plantronics, of course, made headsets for many years, and Polycom made speakerphones. They uh, merged in 2018, and just a few weeks ago, HP bought the whole thing. So Poly is the new company, which is now part of HP. And they've got this really cool webcam that I saw that I thought some of you might find of interest. This is a 1080p webcam. It costs about $79. And of course, there's a microphone built in. But if my friend can uh, pop the, uh, the hood on the back there, uh, you can actually attach some of their wireless headsets to it with a USB dongle that those come with. And it just pops into the back of this. So you're able to free up a port on your laptop and have the headset pair to the camera, which might be a little more convenient. Uh, the camera does have a cool shutter on it too. So if we uh, just turn it that way, you can get some privacy without having to put tape over it. And I thought it might be a nice little webcam for some of you that are doing a lot of remote meetings. It also pivots very nicely on its base. So you can uh, turn the camera to the direction that works best for you. I got one in my bag now for review. So look for this one on the channel very shortly. They also have some headsets here. And these have wired and wireless varieties. And then if you are a company that's doing a lot of remote work, they sell these little onboarding kits that have a speaker phone, the camera, and sometimes a headset, basically everything you need to get your employees ready for their remote meetings. So we've been covering printers on the channel, of course, for many years, but one brand we haven't covered in a while is Epson. We looked at one of their EcoTank printers a couple of years back. I think it was like six or $700. This one's a lot more affordable here, $249, they're saying. And this is the ET2400. It's an uh, all-in-one, so it does scanning and copying as well. And what I like about tank printers is that the ink bottles are a lot less expensive than cartridges. And if you are printing with ink frequently, this is often the most economical way to go. And for a long time, these printers cost a lot of money because you were buying everything up front. Uh, but now the prices are definitely coming down here. So uh, hopefully we'll get one of these in to review and see how it performs. Now, a couple of years back, we saw this photo scanner, and it's still out. It's actually one of their more popular holiday products. What you do is load in your photos, like your 4x6s or your 8x10s or some of these older ones, and it just scans them about one per second. 
and it can go right into your phone. And if you're on iCloud or Google Photos or whatever, you can get all these old photos loaded in. What they told me also is that it looks for dates on the front and back, and it can do some smart indexing of the photos by time as well, which might be of interest to a lot of you. Uh, Epson also makes projectors, and we've talked a lot about the cheap projectors out there, but this, of course, is a name brand one. Uh, this is their laser projector. It's pretty compact and lightweight. It's 1080p, 699, and it gets about, I think, 1,000 lumens or so, so it's pretty bright compared to some of the cheaper ones out there. If you want something brighter, though, this is the big sucker here. This is the 4K Pro UHD. They're calling this a gaming projector. And the reason why it has that gaming label is that at 1080p, it will do 120 hertz. So you can hook your Xbox console up to it and get those faster frame rates while you're projecting. And it runs at 2,800 lumens on their spec sheet here, which is very bright. This is not a laser projector, though. It does use a traditional bulb, so you will have a consumable on this one. But the bulbs generally last quite a while. And if you were looking for something that was legitimately bright, uh, this will certainly get you there. Uh, the gaming projector sells for about $12.99. And of course, sometimes these go on sale as well. But not bad for the brightness level and the frame rates there. And of course, it can do 4K at 60 hertz. And I believe it does support uh, some limited HDR modes. So this is a product called the WAGS. And this is an invisible fence item for your dog to keep them confined in a yard. Unlike other products, though, it doesn't shock the dog. It uses a vibrating motor. It uses ultrasonic sound and an audible sound that humans can hear. And if you train your dog with this, you can get them to understand that they've maybe gone too far when the thing starts vibrating or making noises. But it also has a cellular modem built in, so you can track the dog's location. You can turn on the light here, so if it's at night, people can spot the dog as it's running around. There is a battery on board that they say you should probably replace once a day, but it's hot swappable, as you can see here. So you can have one charging, and you just pop it in there. And if you have a dog that is prone to escaping, this might be a great way to keep track of them without uh, all the shocking that goes on with some of the other invisible fence products out there. There is a monthly fee involved with it for the cellular service and the cloud connection. And if you subscribe for a longer period of time, uh, you get a discount off of the $10 monthly charge. So over here at Canon's table, and this is the IV2 photo printer. This is a zinc printer. We've seen those before. And these will print out photos on little stickers. What's neat about this one is that it can print round stickers that you can put on pop sockets and that sort of thing, add some different artistic flair to what you're working on. These are really fun gifts for kids and for folks that like to do scrapbooks and stuff. Uh, the paper here is about 50 cents per sheet. So on the round stickers, you get two stickers per sheet. And of course, the rectangles are a single one but definitely something to uh, check out for holiday gifts, and the photo quality looks pretty good. Now, this camera is called the PIC, and it's a little camera that can follow you around. You can see it moving here, and the app that it's attached to is tracking this gentleman's face here. And of course, of course you got a little message up there, which always happens when we're at one of these shows. But what you can do is assign it to a person, and it will track that person as they move around a room. And it's great for like doing a cooking show or something because you can activate it with your voice, and as you walk around doing stuff, it'll stay locked on the subject. And again, it will do that based on the person's face, so it won't get confused if somebody else walks in the shot. So I stopped by the TCL table, and this is their 6 Series television. This has QLED technology on it, and I have to say it looks really nice. It uh, has a decent contrast ratio here. I've been watching this for a little while. I'm not seeing a lot of backlight bleeding that you typically get on an LED television. And this one has some interesting features to it. Uh, it's 4K, of course. It supports Dolby Vision, but it's got a little sensor underneath for a new uh, feature of Dolby Vision that reads the lighting in the room to get the color calibrated in real time. So it has that on board. Another thing I found interesting is that the uh, pedestal is in the center. A lot of these televisions have feet on either side, and sometimes with the larger ones, you have some issues fitting them on a small stand. This one is center balanced if you're not putting it up on a uh, wall or something. And then in the back here, it's hard to see, but uh, they have a ability to raise the whole set up on the pedestal. So if you wanted to put a sound bar underneath the television, you can do that without blocking the image. So a lot of nice uh, creature comforts here. And one more note for the gamers, it does support AMD FreeSync. 
and it can do a variable refresh rate up to 144 hertz. So it kind of checks all the boxes. It starts at around $600 for the 55-inch version, which I think is a pretty good starting point. So not all that expensive. This is the 65-inch one here that sells for about $1,000, and they have some larger ones coming as well. So that's going to do it for this look at the Pepcom Holiday Spectacular. This was the biggest show I've seen them do in about two years. And, of course, the big one is coming up in Las Vegas. That will be in January at CES, and we hope to get to that one where there are hundreds of companies and we barely make it through there. So let me know what you thought down in the comments below. I love coming to New York City to do these things, and hopefully you found it interesting. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.